Light tanks played key roles in World War II, such as the American M24 Chaffee, which was designed for surveillance and rapid movement. Today, light tanks have been replaced by more versatile vehicles, but modern examples like the Russian Sprut SDM-1 still see use, especially in airborne units. These tanks are fast and highly mobile but lack the heavy armor and firepower of their medium or heavy counterparts. They excel at flanking maneuvers and rapid deployments. Medium tanks were the backbone of armored forces during World War II, with examples like the M4 Sherman or the Panzer IV. They balanced speed, firepower, and protection, making them versatile across various terrains and mission profiles. In modern times, the term medium tank has faded, with many of their roles being taken over by more mobile infantry fighting vehicles and main battle tanks. However, their influence continues in modern MBTs which aim to strike a similar balance. Heavy tanks dominated the battlefield during World War II, with iconic examples like the German Tiger I. These tanks had immense firepower and armor but were slow and prone to mechanical failures. In the modern era, heavy tanks are largely obsolete due to advancements in anti-tank weaponry and mobility. Main battle tanks, MBTs, evolved from medium and heavy tanks to become the dominant force on modern battlefields. Today, tanks like the M1 Abrams, Leopard 2, and T90 are equipped with powerful main guns, advanced composite armor, and sophisticated electronics. These tanks combine the firepower and protection of heavy tanks with the mobility of mediums, making them the centerpiece of modern armored warfare. MBTs are fast, heavily armed, and adaptable to various missions. Tank destroyers were designed specifically to counter enemy armor. In World War II, vehicles like the German Jagdpanther and the American M18 Hellcat were highly effective due to their powerful guns. However, they often lack turrets making them less versatile. Modern equivalents include specialized anti-tank missile carriers like the Javelin-equipped vehicles or Russian Chrysanthemias. While not strictly tanks, they fill a similar role by hunting and destroying enemy armor from long ranges. Tankettes were small, lightly armored vehicles used in the interwar and World War II periods. One of the most well-known is the British Carden Lloyd Tankette, used primarily for reconnaissance. These vehicles were fast but lightly armed, making them vulnerable in combat. In modern times, tankettes have been replaced by more versatile and protected vehicles, but their contribution to mechanized infantry development was important during their time. Super-heavy tanks were experimental giants designed to break through heavily fortified lines. World War II saw prototypes like the German Mouse, a 188-ton behemoth with impenetrable armor and a massive 128 mm gun. While impressive, these tanks were too slow and difficult to maintain, making them impractical. In the modern age, super-heavy tanks are not in use. The focus is on more agile, adaptable vehicles, leaving these colossal tanks as a relic of the past. Infantry fighting vehicles, IFVs, are the modern evolution of light and medium tanks. World War II had few direct equivalents, but modern IFVs like the Bradley Fighting Vehicle or BMP-3 are armored, fast, and heavily armed, capable of carrying troops while engaging enemy armor. IFVs are designed to operate alongside main battle tanks, providing both fire support and infantry transportation, making them vital in modern mechanized warfare. Wheeled tanks have evolved significantly over time. A modern example is the Italian Centauro, capable of high-speed operations on roads, making it ideal for urban and reconnaissance missions. These vehicles are highly mobile but sacrifice some of the off-road capability and armor protection of their tracked counterparts. In World War II, there were very few wheeled tanks, but today they play a crucial role in the rapid deployment of forces. Their lightweight design makes them versatile in both peacekeeping and conventional military operations. Amphibious tanks combine land and water mobility. The World War II-era Soviet T-37A was one of the first tanks with amphibious capability, essential for crossing rivers during deep operations. In modern times, vehicles like the PLA Type 63A of China continue the tradition, being able to drive off naval landing craft and directly into battle. These tanks are crucial for amphibious assaults and naval operations though they are often less protected and lightly armed compared to their traditional counterparts.
Armored personnel carriers, APCs, have been used since World War II to transport infantry. The German SD, KFZ-251, for example, was one of the first APCs and played a crucial role in blitzkrieg operations. Modern APCs like the Stryker or BTR-82 are fast and lightly armored, designed to carry troops safely across the battlefield. They focus on mobility and protection from small arms and shrapnel, but often lack the heavy firepower needed to engage enemy vehicles directly. Self-propelled anti-aircraft vehicles became necessary as air threats increased during World War II. The German Werbelwind mounted four 20mm cannons, providing effective anti-air support. Modern systems like the Russian Panzer S-1 continue this tradition, with advanced radar-guided systems capable of taking down both aircraft and drones. These vehicles offer mobile protection for armored and infantry units, providing a shield against aerial threats while still maintaining battlefield mobility. Self-propelled artillery provides powerful indirect fire support. In World War II, vehicles like the German Hummel or the Soviet Su-152 were crucial in delivering devastating firepower from a distance. Modern equivalents, such as the M109 Paladin or the Russian 2S19 Msta, are essential for supporting frontline troops with long-range precision strikes. These mobile artillery pieces are well-protected and capable of rapidly relocating, making them a key asset in modern combined arms warfare. Self-propelled mortars offer quick and mobile indirect fire support. World War II saw the early development of these, but the concept came into its own in the Cold War and beyond. The modern M1129 mortar carrier or 2S9 Nona provides fire support for mechanized units with their fast-firing and mobile platforms. Unlike towed mortars, these vehicles can rapidly reposition after firing, providing crucial support in urban and fast-moving combat environments. Tanks and armored vehicles have continually evolved, from the light and medium tanks of World War II to today's heavily armored main battle tanks and specialized vehicles like IFVs and wheeled tanks. Each type has a unique role in the modern battlefield, and as technology advances, so too does the future of armored warfare. Which type do you think is the most important for today's conflicts?